it's Janelle Waz, and welcome back to another episode of Waz Reviews. Well, maybe not exactly a Waz Reviews video. If you've been here long enough, you'll know that I'm a pretty big fan of the Echo the Dolphin series. There's just something about a time-traveling dolphin saving the world from aliens that really captured my wonder as a kid. So of course, I have reviews of all the Echo games on my channel, starting with the very first in the series, Echo the Dolphin for the Sega Genesis. But did you know that the Sega Genesis wasn't the only way to play Echo in the 90s? That there was also a Sega CD version. In fact, a lot of Genesis games have ports on the Sega CD, usually with an improved soundtrack or full motion video clips thrown in. And of course, me being me, I happen to own the first two Echo games on the Sega CD. In all their big plastic case glory. But what exactly makes the Sega CD version of the first Echo the Dolphin game so special? Is it worth playing it over the Genesis game? Heck, is it even better or worse than the Genesis game? Once again, let's dive into Echo the Dolphin, but this time on the Sega CD. But before I go further, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I talk a lot about Star Trek, video games, and whatever else I feel like talking about. And if you'd like to help support the channel, consider becoming a member. Be great to have you aboard. Now, what exactly did I mean that this isn't exactly a Waz Reviews video? Well, in my reviews, I typically go over the entire game. Plot, gameplay mechanics, annoying levels, whatever. But since the Sega CD version of Echo the Dolphin is basically the same game with some improvements, it would be a bit redundant to rehash everything here. So this review is going to be a little different from my other review videos. I'm going to focus on the unique features of the Sega CD version of Echo the Dolphin. For a review of the game itself, I'll direct you to my Sega Genesis Echo the Dolphin review. It's an older review, but it checks out. It's an older code, sir, but it checks out. But as a recap to all you newcomers, Echo the Dolphin follows a young dolphin named Echo, whose pot is suddenly taken by a storm after he jumps a little too high out of the water. His journey takes him across the ocean, to frozen waters, to the lost city of Atlantis, and even across time and space to rescue his family from becoming dinner to some hungry, hungry aliens. It's definitely a unique story that only gets weirder as it goes on. And this game blew many a young mind in the 90s after traumatizing them with that first scene. So what makes the Sega CD version of Echo the Dolphin different from the Genesis version? Well, let's start with the little things. As with many Sega CD ports of Genesis games, the audio was upgraded. Most of the sound effects are the same, but if you compare the splashing sound Echo makes when he jumps in and out of the water in both versions of the game, the Sega CD version sounds closer to a real sound effect than the 16-bit sounds of the Genesis. Gen it's not much, but it does sound a lot nicer. And sure, it would have been nice to have all the sound effects enhanced like that, but on the other hand, there's just something so iconic about those classic Genesis sound effects, and I wouldn't want to see them go. Though I wouldn't mind seeing this sound effect getting taken out. Yeah! With all the sound effects to replace in this game, why would you skip over that one? Now, I can't speak highly enough of the game's improved soundtrack. I'm not saying I hated the original soundtrack, but the 16-bit tones of the original Genesis soundtrack were always a little too tinny. They're not even bad melodies, it's the harsh tones. However, the soundtrack was completely overhauled for the Sega CD, to the point where it's CD quality. While it would have been nice to have a remastered version of the Genesis soundtrack, the game's new soundtrack is pretty sweet. It still has that mysterious tone that comes with exploring the dangerous ocean, while also making it an epic adventure that transcends time and space. The soundtrack truly feels like it's from another world, while still feeling appropriate for a game that mostly takes place on Earth. 
I find myself coming back and listening to this soundtrack a lot. That being said, I still miss the time travel song from the Genesis game. You can never replace that one. Play Now, we are talking Sega CD here, so you know what that means. FMV! The Sega CD was known for its use of full motion video, or FMV. And while it gets a lot of flack for its grainy video quality, it was still one of the early consoles that could play videos. So, does Echo the Dolphin for Sega CD include FMV? Why, yes it does! And it can be found in the Atlantis level, the library, where you can check out all the latest dolphin documentaries? Dolphins breathe air, though they live in the sea. What the we hell? Know that dolphins... Yeah, this level has a bunch of glyphs that echo can sonar and discover the epic battle between the Atlanteans and the game's antagonist, the Vortex. It's a lot of exposition, but gives context to what happened to Echo's pod. It would have been really cool to have an FMV video of that battle, even with some delightfully cheesy 90s graphics. I know you're capable of it, Sega! You have it in Tides of Time on the Sega CD! But instead, there's this random dolphin documentary shoved in. In two parts! The documentary is spread out over two glyphs! Just... Why? Was Sega so desperate to have FMV in this game that they were willing to throw anything dolphin-related in? I mean, why not throw in an episode of Flipper while we're at it? I don't play a game about a time-traveling dolphin that saves the world from aliens to learn, Sega! They call him Flipper, Flipper, faster than lightning. But in all fairness, it doesn't hurt the game or anything, it just feels out of place. Bottlenose dolphins are sturdy animals that grow to an average length of about 9 feet and weigh about 500 pounds. It's mostly water weight! Now, there is a small saving grace as far as FMV goes, and that is the game's intro. There's a nice animated intro before you press start, one that takes you from a view of Earth in space to a wide shot of the ocean and of Echo and his pod swimming and jumping around. It's not much, but I like it. Now, there is something else the Sega CD version has that the Genesis version doesn't. Something that's noticeable throughout the game, but especially noticeable when you sonar those documentary glyphs. Load times. The game actually has to take time to load up the videos and even the levels themselves. As someone who's familiar with the Genesis game where load times are minuscule and barely noticeable, the load times are very noticeable in the Sega CD version. Which, from a technical standpoint, makes sense. The CD has to spin for the system to read the disc off of, as opposed to the cartridge version, which stays in one place and is read immediately. It's a little annoying seeing a black screen when the game loads, but I can live with it. I can live with it. But audio and video is fine and dandy and all. Has the actual game been improved for the Sega CD? And to that I would say, yes. Mostly. Let's start with the good. Echo the Dolphin has a reputation of being a notoriously hard game. Though I mostly disagree with that, but that's a subject for another video. The Sega CD version, however, makes the game much less of a nightmare with the inclusion of checkpoints. In the original game, if you died during any part of a level, you would have to repeat the entire level from the beginning. Though, to be fair, you have unlimited lives to get it right. But in the Sega CD version, if you die during a level, you have the option to continue from the last barrier glyph you opened. And with some levels having multiple barrier glyphs, there can be a couple of checkpoints scattered throughout some levels. The checkpoints make Echo the Dolphin a much more pleasant experience. I mean, imagine if I kept having to restart this level from the beginning. But now for the downside. These checkpoints will only get you through most of the game. Most. The last three levels, including the infamous Welcome to the Machine level, don't have any barrier glyphs or checkpoints. 
So yes, you'll still have to live through the horror of an auto-scrolling seven-minute level that constantly fakes you out where if you die, you have to start over from the beginning. A level that you'll be forced to repeat if you die during the final boss. Don't worry, kids. You won't miss out on the Echo experience. Nobody escapes Welcome to the Machine. Nobody. Though, to be fair, the new soundtrack makes that level far less insanity-inducing. Speaking of levels, there are five additional levels in the Sega CD version of Echo. And you'll notice them all right because the artwork looks clearly different from the rest of the game. You can tell these levels were added in after Tides of Time because the assets look like they came straight out of that game. Which begs the question, why not replace the Echo 1 Dolphin sprites with the Echo 2 Dolphin sprites that look less cartoony and just... better? But, whatever, it's more Echo content, right? Well, not really. Honestly, these levels don't really add anything to the game and just serve as filler. No additional plot details, just padding. While I always kind of like the open ocean level, I'm not sure I really needed to repeat it going the other direction after finishing off the ice levels. Although, it does help transition the game to and from the icy regions. In the Genesis game, you leave the cold water level and suddenly you're back in the tropics. Here, you have to travel back to the tropics. So, I can excuse that level. The other new levels do something similar. Show Echo's journey from the tropics to Atlantis. I guess it helps prepare you for Atlantis by seeing human influence in the form of sunken ships, which, again, are totally from Tides of Time. But, again, these levels don't add anything other than pad out the game. They're not difficult, but the level designs aren't groundbreaking either. I think if the new levels had been added to various sections throughout the game, I'd probably be less harsh on it. But because they're clumped together right before Atlantis, it just feels like padding. There's nothing substantive, and it doesn't really need to be there. But do the new levels detract from the overall game? To be honest, not really. I can put up with some filler levels if the overall game experience is good, and it certainly is. But now we come to the big question. Which version of Echo the Dolphin should you play? The original Genesis version or the enhanced Sega CD version? While I would encourage playing the original Genesis version in all its difficulty, the Sega CD version is a much more pleasant experience. Sure, I can go on about the wonderful soundtrack and the little improvements to the game, but what really sells me on the Sega CD version over the Genesis version are the checkpoints. Even as a veteran Echo player, I found the game much less frustrating, not having to repeat the beginning of the levels ad nauseum. Even if I'm not sold on the extra levels and the FMV is a little bit of a joke, the checkpoints make playing the Sega CD version much more appealing than the original Genesis version. Yes, you should try to play the original game, but the Sega CD version is much more pleasant without sacrificing the Echo experience. Heck, you might even get through the game with the help of the checkpoints. Until you hit Welcome to the Machine and you lose your mind like everyone else. So what do you think? Have you played the Sega CD version of Echo the Dolphin? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What's your preferred method of playing Echo? Genesis or Sega CD? And what are some of your favorite Sega games? Please, leave comments below and discuss. As always, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Waz Reviews. If you like what you see, why not give my video a like and subscribe to my channel. Tell your friends! Until next time... It's a dolphin.